Okay, so I want to speak about uh, Lady Sarah Hussey and the incident with uh, Marlin Headley, uh, a.k.a. Ngozi Fulani. This is really tragic. Very, very tragic indeed. Here we have a lady who has given her life, 62 years of her life, in service to our monarch. She was simply, we, we know that uh, Melina Hadley apparently wasn't even invited to this event. She was simply doing what she has been doing for over half a century, meeting and greeting. So, here we see her with the Queen's uh, former inquiry, Lieutenant Colonel Nana Kofi, let's get his name correct, Tawasi Ankara. Okay, this was the Queen's inquiry. A Lieutenant Colonel is the rank which is used in, to be in command of a whole regiment. This is a black guy who is in a household derision, part of the Queen's Guard. It was Prince Charles who, over 30 years ago, commented that there was a lack of black faces in the Guards. And as a result of that, the unofficial colour bar came down within the service and more black people were allowed into the Guards Regiment. I remember myself when I was going into the army and I wanted to go into the tanks. And in those days, they wouldn't have black people in cavalry regiments. It was an unofficial bar. But here we see her arm in arm with the Lieutenant Colonel, the Queen's Equerry, which is a very prestigious position to hold. It means you are the confidant and aide of the monarch. By the way, the Lieutenant, T.A. as he's called, was the one who was slow marching all the way up the Royal Mile in Windsor beside the Queen's coffin. Such is the dedication. Now the difference between Ngozi Fulani and uh, Nana Kofi Twazi Nkara is simple. He is a man of African descent, born in Africa, who has embraced British culture to the level of actually willing to spill his blood for his country, which he lives in. Now, Ngozi Falami is a made-up name, and it's quite interesting because, number one, uh, Melanie Headley, which is her real name, is Barbadian. Her parents come from Barbados. As you know, Barbados is uh, giving up uh, the monarchy and head of state, uh, as it's a uh, head of state, I think it's next year. So that's interesting. However, what's even more interesting is her name, Ngozi. Ngozi is a very common uh, girl's name for the Ibu uh, nation, which resides in Nigeria. Fulani is a name of a tribe, a Muslim tribe, which are close with the houses. And they were quite instrumental in persecuting the Ibus, i.e. all the girls like Ngozi, prior to the Biafra War, and which was the cause and reason why they wanted to break away from the Nigerian Federation, and which resulted in the Biafra War. So to parade and masquerade yourself in a name of two different tribes, it's a bit like sort of calling your daughter or, sorry, calling your son Christian and Muhammad. Okay? Uh, it's a bit like that in terms of if you saw, as Malcolm X would say, a Chinese man with the name of John Smith, you would be curious to know where that story came from. Because you do not see many uh, Chinese men called John Smith. Let's go into it a little bit more. So here we have so-called Ngozi Fulani. 
wearing what could only be as an abomination of an appropriation of you know trinkets of the 54 countries and thousands of uh, national identities of the people from Africa okay she's got a printed so-called leopard skin dress why she chose a leopard skin I don't know you have to remember her name well she's adapted Ngozi Fulani West Africa there aren't leopards in West Africa by the way okay let me tell you something else no uh, Ibu woman and no self-respecting Fulani woman would be dressed like that okay they don't dress like that they wouldn't recognize it she's wearing cowrie bill beads which used to be a form of currency in west africa years ago and then wearing sort of like drapes with a tarara on her head it's pathetic and then wearing the brown underlay because supposedly she feels that uh, it would be like brown skin, but she didn't want to expose her naked skin. What she's wearing there would be quite similar to a southern African, I think maybe Zulu or something, uh, tribe or Bantu tribe, okay? Southern Africa, about 6,000 miles away from the area which she's claiming her name to be, okay? So it's, it's, it's a, a total abomin abomination. Uh, and, 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 and it's, it's a bit like calling yourself Adolf Bismarck. No, that's right. I remember when I went on holiday to Egypt uh, with my then wife, and we booked a hotel, and the uh, Egyptian manager's name was Winston Bismarck. Now, at <laughs> first time, we thought this sounds a little bit odd. Winston Bismarck? What a strange name. What's the story behind that? Needless to say, when we went to the hotel, we found out that the hotel was still being built. Okay? Hadn't even been built correctly. Now, this person here is wearing fake garb. Okay? It's not even traditional clothing, because there's no particular tribe in Africa which women go around like that at all. And if she went to Barbados with her hair like that, she would be laughed out of court. She probably wouldn't go into any, get into any particular uh, reception. Okay? In Barbadian society, middle class society. Okay? Uh, it really hurts me that uh, the British establishment are hoodwinked and bend over backwards to accommodate these gaslighters, narcissist type people, personalities. And that there's not enough black people to actually give them proper advice as to when they're being flim flammed, when they're being conned. Because this woman is just simply conning. Now, she runs a so-called uh, uh, charity for uh, domestic abuse for African-Caribbean women. Okay, So she gate-crashed the buck and the thing. Okay? There, in and of itself, is racial. Because, like I say, there are, like, in, in, in Nigeria alone, there are hundreds of different tribes. Okay, So when you think about the 54 nations of Africa, how many other different tribes are there? Okay. Yet yeah, apparently her charity accommodates that. Because for some reason they know all the different cultures within that. Okay. Yet yeah, she doesn't even know her own culture because she says she's British. So she doesn't know the etiquette of her own culture as to how you approach these social gatherings. Okay. But let's, you know, put that to one side. Okay. The charity itself discriminates against anyone who is black. So, for example, if you were um, an Aborigine from Australia, you would not, un undergoing domestic violence, you would not be allowed in that charity because you are not African Caribbean. <laughs> Likewise, if you come from Papua New Guinea, you should not and would not be allowed to go there. Or if you were from Asia or one of those little black tribes which are in India. Right? You wouldn't be able to go there into her charity because they discriminate based on your heritage okay, and your gender because the assumption, of course, is that domestic violence is always perpetuated, perpetuated, 
perpetuated by men against women. Okay. Um, it hurts me. Lady uh, Sarah Hussey should be reinstated in the media effect. This woman should be called out and she should be sued for defamation. Because everyone's going on talking about how Lady uh, Hussey was racist. Everyone's going around talking about how racist this lady is. She's not racist at all. At all. Far from it. She's British. She's possibly English. Okay, well, Hussey itself, not familiar with that name. It doesn't sound very English name, but she's English through and through and through the core. Okay? And she is just simply serving her country through its traditions and values. Okay? I don't see much racism there. Do you? Does she look like someone who's racially offending this gentleman on her arm? No. I've seen these Marlene Headleys thousands of times. Let me tell you something. As a black person in this country, if you meet another black person who you don't know, the second question they're going to ask you after what's your name is where do you come from? And if you just say, you know, Hackney, or Stoke Newington, England, they're going to dig deeper, like everyone does. It's just a curiosity factor. How did you get here? I know, there's a story behind you. It's digging and finding out your thing. It's really shameful how they're trying to attack the monarchy and allowing it to happen. And the mainstream media are actually working and instrumental in this. It's got to stop. If you are British, irrespective of what you're heritage or ethnic background is, if you are British, if you believe in this country, you should sign a petition to have this woman reinstated and admonish that woman, Marlene Headley, who changed the name to some fake abomination of a name. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I think, I, I don't know, I know that she studied uh, African stuff at SOAS, for example, and that's about as far as it goes. Yeah, she's just a gravy chain quango. Yeah, getting money's in, okay, from gullible people who will be prepared to donate to this organisation which she works into. Okay, we need to respect this woman here, Lady Sarah Hussey, for the service which she's done to this country. Okay, and I'm proud to have her as a part of the establishment. Well, that's the end of another video. Thank you for your time.